How you doing? Can, can you start by giving us your name? Yeah, my name's Jackie Earl Haley, and I'm playing Guerrero on Human Target. So, uh, I'd like to ask you about the development of the character. How much uh, was right there in the pilot script, and uh, what were you able to bring to it? Uh, was was it always uh, you know, was dude always there? <laughs> you know, the, everything was uh, was in the pilot. I mean, I think the I think the biggest thing I probably brought to the character was was dude, and that was just. Uh, um, just trying to kind of breathe some life, you know, trying to figure this out. We're on this set, I'm scared, we're hauling ass, I'm not used to that, right? It's like we're shooting something in, you know, three weeks, I'm used to like four months. Yeah. And, uh, and it just kind of started to come out, which is kind of neat though, because it really kind of, it, it's a weird <laughs> de defining thing to the guy. Um, it's just a really interesting character though. Um, it has been, it's been really fun kind of working with John in talking about, you know, who this guy is and the various kind of things like and it's neat how this stuff leaks out too. I remember we were having this conversation about about wouldn't it be interesting if perhaps Guerrero has like this family or, or, or a kid or, or what have you. This is, we talked about that during during the pilot. And so it was really neat, you know, to, it, you know, when I'm reading that conversation with Baptiste and he mentions it, it was yeah. like, wow, you know, yeah. I love how this stuff is eking out instead of like, boom, look, here it yeah. all is, isn't that fun? Yeah. It's like, here's a little answer, but it comes with three more questions. Yeah. Man, I, I, I love that. You, you've had a really great year so far, um, and you're playing three completely different characters from each other, Rorschach, this guy, and Freddy. How do you how do you wrap your head around those three characters, and what do you think is the distinctive Jackie Earl Haley role? <laughs> like how, like how do you do it? How do you wrap your mind around those such distinct characters? You know, kind of all in different ways. Um, Ron, Ronnie's probably the most real. He's a human being, so I really kind of had to focus on the, on that aspect. Of, uh, of that character, and it was kind of hard in this different kind of way, right? Um, Rorschach, you know, uh, super interesting character. That guy probably has affected me personally more than any other character. Even Freddy? I'm sorry? Even Freddy? Yes. Um, because of the complexity of Watchmen, what it forces you to think about, to contemplate. Um, in playing that character, I would isolate and kind of start to look at the world through through a Rorschachian filter. Not 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 quite his. I adjusted it a bit. You know what I mean? Because he's this extreme right nut job, but his cynicism cynicism <coughs> kind of made me a little bit more cynical. And I, while we were doing this, was all during the primaries that you know led to the to, to, to the big presidential thing, and then eventually the economic. Everything's falling apart, so all of this is kind of, you know, the world is bearing out all my cynicism as I'm doing all this, so it's just, it's a very odd thing. Nightmare on Elm Street, I kind of started down this road where I was uh, really looking at serial killers. So I was kind of looking at this as a real human, and I was starting to kind of really prepare myself to do this work. I don't know what I was thinking. I, uh, I, I, I kind of keyed into Ed Kemper, and then... I saw that, oh look, they did a movie, and I clicked on it, went to YouTube, and it was this slasher movie. And it really pissed me off. I thought it was going to be some smart examination of the mind of a serial killer. And it was this, you know, slasher movie. And that's when I realized, oh my gosh, I'm playing a mythological boogeyman. And that's what I needed to embrace. You know, that's when I realized that this is a, this is a campfire story. This is, this is, um... A really kind of an interesting part of our culture, you know, and this is what I needed to embrace was the boogeyman. Now I still needed to look at the human side of them, and and you know try to, to I think bring um, some reality to it. But you know it was freeing when I discovered I didn't have to go into that world. And you know Guerrero again, he's he's kind of uh, you know he's a really interesting character, but he lives in a pretty un un unrealistic world. You know this action genre, comic book genre, and, um, but yet, you know, there's some neat under, underpinnings of reality going on there. You know, I think that there are people like Christopher Chance and like Guerrero and like Winston that kind, that kind of live in this fringy world. Like, we all kind of like have rules that we, we live by and we've all agreed to do that. 
where these guys live, you know, if a guy like Guerrero kind of lives his life in, in a way that we all can see, like, oh, look, he's got values and morality, I mean, he'll, he'd probably be dead the next day. You know what I mean? He, he won't let, you know, values and morality and normal things like that put him at risk. So I think over time we'll learn that that guy's got kind of got a philosophy, you know, in life that, you know, makes sense to him. And I think we'll understand that it makes sense to him whether we agree with it or not. But, Jack, I'm sorry, didn't mean to Sorry. Uh, can you tell us about the fight scene between you, uh, between you and Mark uh, in the season finale? How did that go? It was awesome. Was it? I haven't seen it, but what a blast. It looked it was so dope. Cool. I got to tell you, this whole show is like one of the funnest things I've ever done. Um, at first it was kind of, you know, a little, a little scary, a little hard, I'm wondering, oh, well, heck, what did I get myself into here? And then I started to, to, to learn a little bit more about TV, how it worked. When I started seeing the shows, this was before you guys had started getting them on DVD and stuff, I started realizing, oh my gosh, these guys rock, meaning, uh, meaning like the writers, the, the, the teams that they've assembled for, like, like the directing guys and the crew and... You know, Mark and Shy, I mean, the, the shows were like really looking good, like big TV, and um, that just made it even all the more fun. And living in Vancouver and stuff, and then finally getting to do like a fight sequence, and it's just kind of neat now. What, what do you think are the differences between working in TV and film? The, I'm still trying to figure it out. The, the biggest difference is, uh, is the fact that a lot of the development is backwards to me. Because I'm used to, you know, you get one screenplay and then you, you work on, you know, with the director on, on, on the character and, and the various things and, and then you go and you attack and, you, and you're kind of done. You know, on this, you know, TV show it's more about, you know, hopefully you're doing a hundred little mini movies and it's just so much of the development is on the other side of what you're working on. Meaning not on this script, but in, in following scripts. And so it's a really interesting process. And it's kind of neat. Um, you know, as we're sitting here talking, you know, if the show gets picked up, it's like this character is still, still very much alive and we're still kind of like working on it. I'm not used to that. Normally when I'm talking to you, this is all done. You know, it's, it's a project that's over here now we're kind of talking about. You know about it, like you know, yeah. historical. Where this is like, you know, maybe we're still working on this. Can you talk about the specific character dynamics between uh, you and the other two sides of the triangle? And they, they don't, there's almost like a Kirk Spock McCoy thing going on there or something. I think it's kind of neat because I, I think Winston is a lot on that on that gauge. You know, Winston's kind of uh, running the office for for, for Chance, and uh, I think there's a there's a Guerrero is kind of a dividing force between the two. I think there's a history between Chance and Guerrero that even after this last episode, I don't think we're going to fully realize how deep that goes unless this thing goes on for a while. And uh, I, 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 it is kind of neat how there's some cool little hang-ups between these guys. It makes yeah. for some real neat fodder. But it's also very, like, realistic in the fun sense that, that people are different. They see things different. And, and when you get a group of people that are kind of working on the same things, but they're kind of of different minds, it's, it kind of makes for some neat conflict and neat drama. Excuse me, guys. I have to interrupt. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.